Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and in the series of CE industrial training interviews, we have with us Samvik from BCG. He is doing his industrial training from Boston Consultancy Group, that is BCG. Yes, you heard it right that BCG do hire CE industrial training. They hired around seven people last year and Samvik is one of them. So Samvik, can you just give your brief introduction and how was the CA journey before industrial training? Can you just give us a quick brief on your article ship journey as well? Sure. So hi Priya, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'll just start with my CA journey first and then we'll get to this. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, based out of Kolkata, I'm born and brought up in Kolkata. I did my graduation from St. Xavier's College uh, in, and I did BCom. Okay. And then uh, simultaneously I started my CA journey. Uh, I cleared my inter in 2019 November and post that I started my articleship with PwC in their transfer pricing practice. And uh, I continued there for about six to seven months, and then I made a shift to uh, the audit department of ENY Kolkata. Uh, I continued there for about one and a half years, and after completing two years of my articleship, I made a shift to Mumbai, and I joined BCG uh, in their management consulting practice. So that is uh, a brief about my CA journey. Okay, so uh, what comes to your mind to join industrial training or what was your reason to uh, have industrial training on your resume as well? So can you explain that? Why did you join industrial training? So uh, to be honest, uh, I never had the intention to join industrial training per se. I was uh, happy to complete my articleship with EY and then, you know, give my exams based out of Kolkata itself. Uh, but uh, then... So then I heard of this opportunity that BCG has started hiring industrial training and in the front-end management consulting domain. So that is something that I always wanted to pursue post my qualification as a chartered accountant and I thought that this is one opportunity that I should not let go of. So I did not apply to other companies as well. Uh, I did, uh, you know, try to talk to some other people in ABG and other firms to get an idea of uh, what the industrial training exposure is but uh, I never had the intention to join other other firms as such so BCG was the reason I chose industrial training So as you said that you heard that BCG is hiring CA industrial training so how did you come to know about this? Was that from any uh, LinkedIn or from any such source or was it internal? B the way BCG does this is they put out a post on LinkedIn like uh, so the CA cohort BCG has a CA cohort which has like all the qualified CAs that are working in BCG. So one of them put out a post on LinkedIn. And uh, one of my seniors also shared that post with me. Uh, I came across it later. She shared it with me before I could actually see it on LinkedIn. And that's how I applied. So that's the standard practice that they have followed for the industrial training program. Ours was the first batch, of course. But they have hired uh, one batch after us, which is for the November 23 exam as well. And this is the process that they have followed for hiring uh, industrial training. Because yeah, we all know that LinkedIn LinkedIn is the key to uh, get the industrial training because a lot of companies do post their vacancies and uh, people who are already working there do post the vacancies on LinkedIn. Yeah, the next thing which I want to ask is uh, how did you felt when you actually got an offer from BCG that okay, you are selected for this role and what was your feeling at that time? Because people do uh, dream of to uh, go into BCG post qualification and you got the chance to, uh, you know, go in your dream company even before the qualification. So how do you felt that? Yeah, I think, uh, okay, so when we got to know, basically uh, it was on the date of the interview itself when they announced, not announced, but they told us that we have been like the seven of us that we have been selected. So that was quite a surreal moment. It was tough to, you know, process that information at once that okay we have been wow. selected but yeah obviously that moment was really good I, well, if, I hadn't informed my family before that so and then I uh, after the call was over I went and told my mom and my dad that okay I have been selected and everything so that was a very uh, celebratory moment for me okay so you mentioned that on the day of interview only you got to know that you, you have been selected how many rounds of interview were there and it, was it like only one day for all the uh, interview rounds and how was like how was it so i'll uh, start from the uh, very beginning of i'll basically give you a uh, walkthrough of the entire interview yeah. process at once so after uh, like after they had invited our cvs for you know for shortlisting uh, about two weeks after we got uh, after the last date for application uh 
दे अनाउंस द शॉर्ट लिस्ट एंड देर वर अबाउट ट्वेंटी सिक्स और ट्वेंटी सेवन और पीपल हु आर शॉर्ट लिस्टेड फॉर द इंटरव्यू राउंड नो अपोज दैट देर इज अ वन मंथ प्रेपरेशन टाइम दैट एवरी वन इज गिवन फॉर द इंटरव्यू प्रेपरेशन एक्ट एंड ईच कैंडिडेट इज अपॉइंटेड टू बडीज हु आर ऑलरेडी वर्किंग इन बी सी जी एंड सम ऑफ दैम आर सी एस सम ऑफ दैम आर नॉट सी एस बट दैट डजेंट रियली मेक अ डिफरेंस टू विद अ बडी प्रोग्राम एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट वन मंथ टेन योर यू नो वी वर गिवन इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑन हाउ वी कैन यू नो हाउ द केस स्टडीज आर सॉल्व सो द इंटरव्यू प्रोसेस एट बी सी जी इज अ केस बेस्ड इंटरव्यू प्रोसेस वेयर दे गिव अस स्मॉल प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट ऑफ टू थ्री लाइन एंड बेसिस दैट वी हैव टू सॉल्व यू नो को सॉल्व द केस विद द इंटरव्यूअर एंड यू नो आस्क क्वेश्चन एंड क्लैरिफाई द स्कोप ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम एंड देन प्रोवाइड सोल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम सो या सो द वन मंथ टेन योर वॉज फॉर प्रेपरेशन फॉर द इंटरव्यू and on the d day like yes. uh, we started at about 8 am in the morning uh, when all of us had our first round of interview uh, the interview as i said was a case based interview uh, after the first round was over half of the candidates were i guess eliminated yes. then we had a second round and i guess some of some of the interviewees also had a third round uh, i'm not sure because i had only two but yeah so two to three rounds of interviews and uh, all the rounds are case based interview round and then uh, by the time it all got over it was about 5 pm in the evening so like it's a stretch where you have to be there for like from 8 am to 5 pm almost and then post 5 pm we were informed that we have been selected okay so it was the whole one day and uh, the interviews were uh, in that one day and the results were also out in that one day right yeah okay yeah. it was more or less similar to the process the way bcg higher ca is post qualification and uh, uh, how did you prepare for your case study was it only uh, with buddy or you have referred some uh, other material so the good thing is that uh, the buddy help us with all the study material that they uh, that we need to use uh-huh. actually there are case books that are prepared by iims like i am abc and then there are youtube videos available for preparation and uh, i think in terms of resources that was all all that i had used for my preparation and i think that is more than enough for preparing for the interview round so apart from solving cases with buddies uh, a practice that is always recommended is solving cases with the people who have also you know who have also been shortlisted along with you so you get an idea of how others are thinking how they are moving forward with their practice and uh, it also helps you to gauge how you should you know change your methods of preparation according to uh, others so and uh, that also offers you a lot of lot more practice because buddies won't be able to give you a lot of time given their work uh, working hours and schedule so yeah that is one practice that really helped me prepare for the interview uh, you get a whole one month to practice also that is a quite good amount of time to practice for the studies as well uh besides there's also a workshop that is conducted somewhere in the middle of that oh. one month where uh you know the part some of the partners and senior folks from the uh ca cohort come uh, you know and really guide us and inform us about what the role is what the program is all about and then then we have a small one hour session where they solve one or two cases with us oh. like so that is something that you know also gives you some perspective into how you how, what they are expecting out of you and what are the thing that you need to look forward to right right kind of a very helping thing in most of the case we uh, in our article ship or somewhere in uh, most of the interviews were article ship we have not in any way preparing any case studies because that was not in our kind of interview questions booklet for the article ship but for uh, this it was right. there okay the next thing which i want to ask is so is your industrial training was uh, work from home or it's work from office fully or was it hybrid no so it was a completely work from office uh, way of you know operations actually uh, so all of us were going to the client offices directly okay since uh, given the kind of work that we do it is it, it is really difficult if you uh, are working from home like working remotely becomes a kind of a task over there so it is always preferred to be there at the office one thing that i would like to say uh, about like this is many people ask me this question about whether it was work from home or work from office i think it is really better if we have a work from office kind of you know model because yeah we like 
the starting of my articleship was a work from home model and yeah. it became really difficult for me to learn to uh, you know and especially because i was doing something as niche as transfer pricing uh, which is a very kind of specialized role yeah. so it becomes very difficult for you to learn things apart from whatever is given to you Correct. so you won't be able to have a look at the big picture and you won't be able to actually learn a lot which we otherwise do from you know just yeah right working with in a work is. environment you are learning a lot by just being there and absorbing a lot uh, i know that uh, the reason most people ask this is just to get an understanding but uh, i think everyone should always be open to uh, a work from office model yeah correct that also you know uh, opens the gate for communication and networking also because if we go to office then we will meet few people which you know will improve definitely our communication our network it will it will really help us later on so i can assume that weekends are off right and uh, as you said that you used to go for uh, client places so how how did you manage your studies around that so uh, did you get uh, how much time in a day you got for your studies for uh, ca finals okay so uh, starting with weekend weekends are mostly off yes there is work basically it is not like you are given day to day work right you are handed a module and you are the complete owner of that module so it's your you know it's your concerned to get it done by hook or by crook so if if you're not being able to complete your work and there's spillover uh. that goes to the weekends there were weekends where i had to work maybe not the entire day but maybe like 2 to 3 hours a day but uh it is completely because i am the like i have the ownership of my module if i may have if i'm being able to complete it during the weekdays uh well and good i'll have my weekend off which was true for like 60 to 70 percent of the Yeah, right. Coming to the second point, so uh, I had shifted to oh. Mumbai, and my client office was also in Mumbai, so I did not have to do any intercity traveling. So there were no Monday morning flights and Thursday evening flights oh. that I had to take. Uh, but uh, in terms of work hours, uh, like we usually started by ten, ten fifteen, ten thirty latest, and uh, on good days work got over by eight, eight thirty. on bad days it used to stretch to matlab it can stretch to 11 12 uh, if i talk about getting time to study it was usually during the weekend on weekdays it i'll be honest it becomes a little hectic to you know manage your studies yeah. every day because even if you are reaching home on time let's say on 9 9:30 it, it does get tiring sometimes What to you know and it becomes difficult to motivate yourself to uh, sit for studying for like maybe 2 hours and then again wake up in uh, wake up in the morning and then you know start for the day so if someone has a habit of waking up early and you know maybe uh, take out a couple of hours in the morning oh. every day that would be the best practice to study during the weekdays otherwise you'll have to capitalize on, uh, a lot on the weekend so weekdays are generally a bit uh, tied up in terms of time for study you just have to manage on weekends that how can you cover up most of your syllabus right yeah i mean if i have to mm. be honest yes weekends yeah. <laughs> is not <laughs> weekdays is not really a good proposition for studying per se but uh, that yes. that was the case for me i'm sure if someone like i for one know that i am not like the most disciplined person uh. in terms of you know getting myself on to studying and everything for someone who who has that kind of self discipline uh, i'm sure they'll be able to pull it off yeah right so the next question i want to ask is uh, how many leaves did you get so uh, the leave period is about 4 and a half months including the exam days for uh, my case my exam is in may 22 right may 23 oh. uh, and my leave started from the first week of january so four months of leaves for uh, studying and then the 15 to 16 days for exams and then i have to go back to office after that okay that's i think that's a quite good amount of leaves because generally in i think uh, in the other companies also we do get only 3 months leave uh, except exam days so it's kind of 3 and a half months only i also get 3 uh, and a half months on leave if you compare it from industrial training standards i think it's a very good yeah, that's... thing that they're giving 4 months of leave but if you compare it to big fours <laughs> again you you are losing out on a month because Uh, uh at ey i knew that i'll have a good 5 months of study leave except for my industry uh, mcs and advanced site so one thing that i would like to tell everyone is please complete your mcs and itt before uh going for your industrial yeah. training 
for most of the firms that I have heard, they do not give you any extra leave for uh, these training. Uh. And again, these are mandatory to be completed before the exam. So make sure if you are planning for industrial training, make sure that you complete it before you actually go for your training. And uh, now it's it's what yeah. happened is uh, we have eighteen months of industrial training. So if uh, someone wants to go for uh, industrial training and then if they have their MCS and uh, the advanced IT depending, then it will be very difficult to manage all these things with these studies and yeah. leaves and exams. So yeah, that that will be a good suggestion if you are if you can complete your uh, MCS and advanced IT before, then I think uh, everyone should go for that. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, BCG just has a twelve month industrial training program. Like there's no flexibility in terms of the tenure. Oh. It'll be a fixed twelve month program. Okay. This is something that uh, that yeah. came to my mind when you said that 18 months of industry training these days. Uh, so yeah, so BCG has a fixed 12 month program. We, they do not allow you flexibility in terms of the tenure, which is the so uh, as I said, we were informed about being selected on on like on the first in the first week of March itself. But I joined my uh, you know my stint at BCG started on the first week of August. 1st of August actually so there was a good three and a half four yeah. month gap between me actually you know getting to know that I've been yeah. selected and me joining BCG so and that was solely because my articleship the second year of my articleship got over in July this is something that uh, that is there that's a caveat that you'll only be doing one year of industrial training at BCG okay so uh, now as you said that you have been hired in the March 22 uh, cycle kind of so uh, like do we can uh, anticipate that BCG will come again and have a hire in March 23 because that was the first hire so, no, so uh, yeah yeah so so I had a word with about this from someone inside okay. the firm and so they're looking at a November to November cycle right now. Okay. And for us, they actually started the hiring program a little late, which is why the program got over by March. But if I talk about the November 23 term, I think they've hired some 10 to 12 odd people in the November 23 term as well. And the hirings have already been closed. So again, uh, I get a quest- lot of questions about vacancy oh. at BCG yeah. for industrial training. So they don't hire like Bad on boost. random basis there's a yeah. program that they run right and so they've closed the program for november 23 as well so the next program that they would open f- uh would be for the november 24 batch and that would be uh sometime later this year uh in most probably in the second half like close to august september november 23 batch. Would, uh, you know again no the november 24 batch what is the November 23 batch hiring is already closed and uh, they have hired 10 to 12 odd people uh, and they I'm sure they won't hire more than that also. So the next batch that they would hire for would be November 24 and the hiring process for that would start somewhere around September, August, September oh. this year. They will join when the second year of their articleship is over, like most probably it would get over by March or April this year, right? So then they would join, they would work for again 4-5 months and then go off for a study leave. And then again come back for the, uh, you know, remainder of their um, period stint. Yeah. Mm. So be, even even for me, uh, I'll be going back for a two, 2.5 months stint again. My industrial training ends at uh, July uh. End, July 23. If I talk about my my particular stint, uh, then five months of training before my study leave, then four and a half months of study leave, and then the remainder I'll have to okay. go and work again. Mm. Uh, the next batch that they would hire for would be the November 24 batch. People who are appearing for their exams in May, I think, will have to you know take a shift of six months and defer their term to appeal for the November okay. 24 term if they mm. want to you know take grab this opportunity. So, uh, I think uh, next we would uh, like to know about what is the stipend range and stipend criteria there at BCG. So, uh, the stipend is, uh, in terms of industry standard, which is, you know, probably one of the highest that uh, any of the firms pays in terms of for industrial trainees. Uh, I'm not sure if I can quote the entire, like, the amount or not, but they pay something that is enough for you to sustain your or training period even if you are shifting to another city like so I shifted to Mumbai and I was able to sustain my expenses over there so in terms of stipend they pay enough 
Well, I'm. I would like to keep it at that. The other thing I want to know is if someone is doing his industrial training at BCG, so whether he can expect a pre-placement offer from BCG. Yeah. So as a post, uh, I mean post qualification. Right. So the good thing about uh, this program, this industrial training program that BCG has started is they already uh, at the beginning of the program itself told us that there is a opportunity for us, you know, a pre-placement opportunity for us post. Uh, we our qualification. There are just two caveats. One that you have to qualify your uh, CA exams with course without thing, and the second is uh, we will be judged based on our performance. So a PPO is always on the table for uh, all of us, I guess, and it is just based on our performance and you know uh, how well we are being able to do over there. Uh, one more thing that I'd like to mention is so when they hire us post qualif. qualifying they would be hiring us at a associate level which is the level at which they hire qualified chartered accountant but the good thing is that they will uh, if i'm not wrong they'll give us a 6 months tenure which means the first promotion that would happen let's say to uh, two years later would instead happen one and a half year later so okay. that is another good thing that we were informed about uh, at the beginning of our program hmm, that's impressive So what what kind of work uh, you would uh, do in your industrial training? The reason I wanted to I'm sorry I'll take a small detour and this might be a long answer but uh, the reason I wanted to go with management consulting as a career option was because uh, there is no limitation in terms of the work that they want us to do in the sense that uh, it is not something that only CS can do right so if I talk about my team four of my team members were engineers and MBAs. and uh, uh i was the only one with a commerce background in my team right there is a lot of diversity in the sense the work here is not something that is related to ca specifically right it uh, and there is one term that they use in management consulting that it could be anything and everything under the sun that the client wants you to do uh having said that this is the criteria that they look for in the uh, you know hiring process as well uh, like if you ask them what's the think that they're looking for uh, in candidates the two answers would be one problem solving and two a structured mindset i think uh, this is what they judge you on in the interview process as well this is the good thing that i liked about the work culture at bcg and uh, in terms of the kind of work that is given uh, i'd say that there is no difference between a work that you are doing or someone who's done an uh, mba and has joined at a senior associate level would be doing so uh, there is a flat hierarchy in, in that sense that uh, everyone under the manager is given their respective modules to work on and they are the owners of their module you will always uh, when you're new to the firm you're always given a cover for like the first 3 4 months who really helps you and guides you uh, with how you need to approach and how the working culture of bcg is the bcg way of doing things but uh, you will be the owner of your module and you will be working independently on that so yeah uh, if i talk about uh, if i compare someone who is a, a qualified chartered accountant and me as an industrial trainee uh, we would be doing the same level of so, uh, if someone wants to go for uh, c industrial training in bcg so what can you suggest him or her to uh, you know prepare for or to uh, work on before they can actually apply and then the interview process goes on what things they can you know work on to improve or to imp- uh, improve the chances of their selection so i think uh, starting from the first step which is getting your cv shortlisted right uh, again mm-hmm. it is a it is somewhat a seek not a secret but it it is not an open truth that what are the thing that can get your cv shortlisted having but yeah. uh having spikes on your cv always helps so some could say that uh, getting a rank is a good spike or you know working in big fours maybe so uh, yeah so when they had opened the short uh, like when they had invited for our cvs uh, they had mentioned that the criteria for shortlisting would be uh, a rank in their inter or in the inter or foundation examination uh big four article chip but uh, apart from that i think uh, these are not just the like these two might be playing good roles in getting you shortlisted but there are other thing that they look for as well right uh and bcg uh 
now and for sure play uh, you know gives a lot of emphasis on your extra curriculars and they don't just want a good student or uh, you know a good employer sort they want uh, they are looking for personalities beyond work as well so your extra curriculars play a huge role so if you have a spike in any of these three be it your article chip experience your uh, student life your academics or your extra currics uh, i think a lot of people who uh, like for other like even if you talk about mba colleges or other undergrad colleges that bcg hires top uh, they if someone is like a state level or a national level player for any of the sport I, or you has taken up some initiative which you know really makes them stand out i think they get a very good chance of getting shortlisted so in terms of cv shortlisting that is something that you can look at so if uh, for uh for someone who is doing ca i know it becomes really difficult to you know cope up with extra currics but uh there are a lot of conferences and debates that icai organizes i think taking part in those really helps you boost your confidence and you know uh also helps you build your cv and piece of advice would be to keep focusing on your studies mm. in the first two years of article chip as well like i had not focused as much on my studies as- in the first two years as much as i would have liked to uh, and that is something that it it becomes difficult for you to make make for all of it in the last four or five months because you yeah. always also have the pressure on you uh, so a consistent practice of studying would really help you uh, you know relax the pressure in the end and in terms of uh, preparing for the interview i think having good communication skill skills always helps you because uh, like when so it is a virtual interview right you are sitting in front of a laptop screen and talking to the ma- yeah. partner or whoever is taking your interview that one small 14 in screen needs to you know you need, really need to bring out uh, your personality through that 14 in screen it is really uh, recommended to practice you know your practice keep practicing to improve your communication skills uh, that always helps and yeah uh and in terms of pre- preparing for the case interviews i think that one month of practice is enough where you get enough material and you get enough gyan from everyone on how to prepare mm. what to do what not to do so uh yeah these are the things that uh i think if everyone keeps these things in mind uh it uh, gives you a good shot at it at last i want to ask you what one thing you enjoy at bcg or what one thing which is really fun at uh, being at bcg i'll i'll give a serious answer in terms of uh, what's the really good thing at bcg and one will be a very genuine and candid answer that i would like to give so in terms of work i would say that you are really being able to you know create an impact with whatever you are doing like there is a sense of uh, there is a very dynamic work ex- uh, work environment that there in which you're working right uh, for example on most of the days you won't know what is the thing that you'll have to do today to you know get your module completed for example the case in which i was working on everything was really new for me and as i said it was not related to what cs conventionally do right I was learning as i was working each day so that dynamic environment really you know pushes you and challenges you to an extent that you have to bring out your best and if you're not doing that uh, it it will easily show up that you're not giving your best so that is something that really you know kind of motivated me to keep on pushing keep on pushing there'll be bad days there'll be good days bad review meetings decent good review meetings and so this really helps you to you know Uh, this changes you as a person and i guess uh, i said this before to some people i was talk i was talking to that uh, i have really changed as a person in the last 5 months and the samyak that i knew before bcg was really different uh, than the samyak that i know now and uh, it's not just about bcg i'm sure that other forms also you know really challenge you and make you work really hard and bring out the best that you have inside so uh, and also uh, the fact that i had shifted my city so uh, everything was new for me in terms of living alone because i've lived with my family all along and 
सो ऑल ऑफ दीज वर न्यू एक्सपीरियंसिस दैट रियली हेल्प मी यू नो ग्रो एज अ पर्सन एंड द सेकेंड थिंग विच इज अ रियली ऑनेस्ट आंसर दैट आई लाइक टू गिव इज सो बी सी जी हैज दीज ऑसम पार्टीज राइट यू वर्क हार्ड बट यू पार्टी इवन हार्डर एंड सो आई थिंक दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द बेस्ट थिंग्स दैट वेन यू न्यू टू दिस इन्वायरमेंट यू विल रियली इन्जॉय इट फॉर द फर्स्ट थ्री फोर मंथ्स यू विल बी हैविंग द टाइम ऑफ लाइफ इन टर्म्स ऑफ द पार्टीज या आई थिंक द पार्टीज दैट वी हैव एंड फॉर द टीम डिनर्स दैट वी हैव दैट इज दैट रियली यू नो हेल्प यू जेल वेल विद द टीम गेट टू नो ईच वन ऑफ यू बिकॉज डरिंग द डे यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वर्क मोस्टली इट्स नॉट दैट यू विल बी सच चैटिंग अलॉट बट दीज पोस्ट वर्क parties really help you get along with the team and keep the environment really healthy so that is something i really think i think uh, the work culture at bcg is really amazing uh, people are really supportive and helpful but if you reach out to them for help they will never say no this is one thing that i've noticed uh, no one ever said that i won't be able to help you i think everyone you know tries to help you with whatever uh, with whatever they can this is something that i really liked uh, i think and wrap up this session here and uh, this was a very informative and thank you for your time uh, insights about dc industrial training at bcg and i think this will be very informative for the people who are asking about uh, you know how the interviews are and uh, regarding the interview questions number of rounds type and reads etc so yeah thank you so much samek to be on the show uh, you yeah, are most welcome and i think Uh, I'd like to thank you as well because it's a uh, really wonderful in- initiative. Because uh, there are a lot of questions that come to me on LinkedIn or and other platform, but it is not humanly possible to answer all of those. And it feels bad because you want to help the you know members of your fraternity. Because I was also there uh, yeah. a little while back mm-hmm. when I was you know in a uncertain position and I wanted to know what are the things that I need to work on, what are the things that I should focus on. So I think. uh and it it really become difficult to answer to all of them you know uh, yeah that's not possible to so, an- answer yeah, each so, and everyone yeah yeah so and it feels bad so this really helps me to convey my part also and you know give a candid answer to all the mm-hmm. question so it's a wonderful initiative and thank you for that and i think it's uh, it also helps us to you know connect with other people from our uh, fraternity for example i didn't uh, i knew that uh you have a youtube channel but never uh, mm. got an opportunity to interact with you before yeah. this so okay. that really helped thank you so much samak for your valuable feedback also thank you okay.